I had inadvertently, doggone it. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, I may have to log in again. Uh, oh, wait, oh. Okay, can I still be heard? Yeah, yeah. We can see, we can oh, see yeah. it. Okay. Okay, good. There we go. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay. I'd like to open the uh, the May first uh, inland Woodstock inland wetlands and watercourses meeting. Uh, it's seven oh nine p.m. by my uh, computer uh, clock, if it's correct. Um, like to call that just to order and begin with a roll call of members present. Uh, I'll begin. Mark Parker. William Merwinski. Marla Stuart. Butts. Stuart Peasley. Okay. Thank you. The chair recognizes that Stuart Peasley is in attendance tonight, so we will appoint him as, uh, as the alternate uh, for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Stuart, for being here and, and the rest of you. Thank you, Dan, for getting uh, the agenda to us and all the uh, appropriate links. Um, so here we go. So we have the action on the minutes of the previous uh, business meetings, plural. Uh, so we have uh, both the regular uh, meeting from March 6th and the regular meeting from April 3rd. Um, could you all refresh my memory why we tabled the... <laughs> Why did we table the March 6th uh, acceptance of meeting? March 6th uh, minutes had inaccurate references to two permits, uh, timber harvest. Uh, one was the Rosenfield um, timber harvest. The other was uh, a Wyndham land trust. Um, and okay. those should read 02-23-02. For the Rosenfield. And 02-23-03 for the Wyndham Land Trust application. I got one spelling uh, error I picked up on that one too. Um, section eight, citizens comments, the last sentence, sorry, Last sentence in the first paragraph, if a oils scientist is needed, it should be soils scientist. Where was that, Stuart? Uh, it, should, it should read, if a soils scientist should be needed, it's yeah. reading oils scientist. Was that on page two? Uh, yeah, last page, citizens comments. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, uh, the Dan, squeaky is, gear gets the oil. <laughs> Dan, this is Bill Rowinski. Um, those reference numbers on the copy that I have, I thought you started them with 02, and I see 03 is the first number. In our uh, permit log, in the office. Um, these are both from February meetings or they were both received in February. And okay. so they, they're in our, logged in our book as 02-2302 and 02-2303. Uh, there might've been an error on the agenda um, mm -hmm. that, that had March dates for these applications, yeah. um, but in our, um, our wetlands log book, um, the numbers that I, I referenced are, are what, what has been assigned to those. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, any other corrections? 
So can I just clarify? Yes. Um, under new applications for the March 6th meeting, item B is 02-23-02. That's Rosenfeld field. And then item C is 02-23-03, Wyndham Land Trust. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. And then the other correction that Stu pointed out under citizens' comments is that the fourth line down should say soils scientist, not oils scientist. Right. Just a typo. I move that the I move that the um, minutes of March 6, 2023 be accept be accepted as amended. Second by Bill Rowinski. Thank you. Motions been made by Marla Butt, seconded by Bill Rowinski to accept the minutes of the March 6, 2023 meeting as amended. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Item number two, the um, April 6 regular meeting minutes. I didn't have anything. I didn't find anything either. I didn't find but it was anything. Dottie. But Dottie did a really good job. Thanks, Dottie. Thank you, Dottie. Bill Rowenski, I move to approve the minutes for Monday, April 3rd, 2023. Woodstock Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency minutes as presented. I second I the motion. <laughs> Sorry. Second yeah. to a story. You second that emotion, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the motion has been made by Bill Rowinski, seconded by Marla Butts, uh, that we uh, approve and accept the, uh, the minutes of the Woodstock Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency minutes from Monday, April 3rd, 2023, as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we gotta get the agenda back up. Oh, where did it go? Uh, So this application was at our last meeting and we had to table it because the documents um, were missing from the folder. Okay, pending applications, right. 03-23-04, in-ground pool and pool fence, 487 Route 198, Audet family, Vernon and, oh, Vernal pools or Vernon pools? <laughs> Are they pool? Oh, is it, oh, is it the, name, the name of the pool company? Vernon pools? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Yes. So we're not looking at an application that's going to infringe on Vernal pools. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'm getting a little punchy. <laughs> I guess Monday. you are. It's Monday. We're... Bill Rowinski, just to refresh you, this appears to be the property across from the old Stoggy Hollow Country Store, and it's on the other side of the, the mill pond there. On the map, we don't have an actual distance to the pond. <laughs> it will be somewhere along that 180 foot line. And the pool size is what? Pool size is no give it, not give it. What is the size of the pool? Is the applicant here, Amber? Uh, Fourteen by thirty. Is that the building or the in-ground pool? Fourteen by thirty, building. Fourteen by thirty in-ground pool. Yeah. So, I assume okay. that's the, that's the size of the pool. Not... So if that's thirty feet, 
I don't know if this is to scale or not. Um, okay. Where's the driveway for this thing? You can't, I'm trying you can't to understand. Scale, you can't scale a photograph. Sure you can. If you know what the, and one of the distance, say, if you knew what the length of the house was, you, could, it's not you could create a scale yeah. for it. It's only and rough. And from that, you can measure off. Um, I, would, I would never accept it as being accurate, though. Well, close enough for government work, I think. <laughs> no, uh, it, it, th this is this is probably not to scale. This full size is probably not to scale. What's missing from here is the area of disturbance, because um, we don't know what the contours are on this. We can see where the septic system is. We can see where the proximate well is, but we can't tell where the slope is. So an in-ground pool usually requires a flat surface for its installation. Now, if that land is sloping away from that house, then that would imply that there has to be some fill that has to be placed or grading that has to be done towards that water body. Or the we don't side. have a limit of disturbance. We don't know how far it's going to go. We don't know what kind of erosion and sediment controls are going to be installed. We're missing a lot on this. Yeah. Um, and un unfortunately, the town's CAI technologies um website or application only goes five foot contours it doesn't do two foot two foot contours so we really can't tell how much filling might be associated with this so i think the applicant has to go back and provide more detail as to what the extent of the land disturbance is and what kind of erosion controls they're going to use to protect the the water body that's located to the west from oh, siltation I, I I'm familiar with the uh, landscape there because I drive by it a lot. Yep. Um, yep. The height differential is probably about eight or 10 feet, mm -hmm. if that's of any use at all. But yeah, there, are, there isn't much else to go on here. Yes. Yeah, when you say the septic, system, the septic system, is that up to the upper left corner of the house? Is that, is that where you're referencing? Upper right. Upper, upper right. right. See where it says um, A, C, D, E? Those are with black lines. Those are measurements from the, the oh. as built from the okay. when it was installed. And that they're okay. using that. And, and they have to get approval from the health department. Um, I think it's called a B100, yeah. which says that the pool is adequately placed far enough away from the septic system in the well. So they did. Receive approval on the B100A from the health department. Okay. Um, that is a document that came in uh, very recently here. Uh, actually, um, 32423 is when they received their B100A approval. Is that is that distance 10 feet? Do you know, Dan? So this. Uh, uh, distance for what, Stu? Uh, to be, uh, you've got to be either from a distribution box or the tank, you have to be 10 feet away. Uh, it's uh, longer than that. Hmm. It looks like it's 25. It looks like it has to be 25 feet. Uh, 25, 25 feet is what uh, this B100A approval um, was based on. Yeah. I thought the minimum was less than that, but I'm just was wondering. And I'm looking at this this photograph, and I know we've already had the, the brief discussion about the accuracy of is this really one inch equals 40 feet? But it, I mean, if based on what I'm seeing here in this provided diagram, um, the pool is is well within 100 feet of the edge of the water body, just you know below them. So, you know, I I agree with my Mar with Marla. I would want to see you know what the extent of of disturbance is going to be you know waterward of that where that proposed pool location is and you know what they're going to have for ens controls etc so yeah i agree I, so i see i'm just i'm just referencing that scale on the left the scale bar yeah i, I mean we really have to really have to rely on the, I, I don't really rely on those kind of things for photographs, but I guess yeah. it's, 
there's a there's got to be a margin of error to right be considered especially when it comes when we're really coming down to uh you know within five feet what so, yeah what, um, what is what is that margin of error is it five foot one foot ten feet and and that's so i that's, took a quick measure i took a quick measurement using um town of thompson's map geo which yeah. allows you to take measurements and that long side of the house is about 50 feet so if the long side of the house is 50 feet that means the north the northwest side then half of that would be 25 feet so that would give you kind of like a, a guesstimation of a scale yeah. So is that pool about half the distance of that house away from the house? A little bit less would make it 20. So it looks like it's about right in the diagram. But so, when I look at the topo when I look at the topography, the two foot contours, um, it gets really flat when you get uh, before you get to the ponded area, it drops real fast. Yeah. So they're putting the pool in the flat spot of the yard. Um, what is the, but they what is still the should show us the area of disturbance. Is the topography fairly eight to ten feet? No, this topography is a uh, two foot lidar taken in 2016, and it's superimposed on the aerial photography. I'm just wondering what the difference this is. What they have in to the uh, water elevation. Okay, so I can take a measurement from the um, house to the to the pond, the corner of the house, the closest corner of the house to the pond is yeah. just about 100 feet. Yeah. And the Upland Review area is 125 feet from a water course. So uh, the entire pool is in the Upland Review area. Right. Now, it's very possible that because it's such a flat area in that backyard that they can they can get a pool in, but they really need to identify what the extent of their land disturbance is going to be. So you know what kind of control they need. Right. So I would suggest, Dan, that you contact the applicant, tell them that we need a better drawing, that they need to show what the extent of the land disturbance is, and a measurement from the edge of the water body to where that edge of disturbance is, and what, what kind of control are they going to use to protect that water course from siltation, <clears throat> should it get heavy rain while they're constructing. The second question I would ask them is where are they gonna take the excess, excess materials? What are they gonna dispose of it? Are they gonna dispose of it on site or are they gonna uh, take it off site? And if they're gonna keep it on site, where are they gonna put it? And how are they gonna stabilize it? So procedurally, Marla, are we not ex receiving this for consideration because it's uh, an incomplete application? No, they paid no? the fee. Correct, Stan. They paid the fee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Technically, technically, the application is received. It's it's um, would have been received last month. Okay. So we have one more month to till next month to render a decision. If they don't supply the information, then we deny the application for incomplete information. Without if they supply the information and it's adequate, then we can decide okay. to have it processed as a wetlands agent approval or approve it that night. Right. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll reach out to them. Thank you. Okay. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, new applications. Um, Roman numeral six, A, application 04-23-01, new single family home in lot seven dash one on route 171, Kathleen Hicks. OK. 
Okay. Construction. Dan, do we have any DH approval for this uh, single family home? I'll double check. So when I was looking at the plans on this, um, if you look at the overall plan that was developed by J&D, site development plan, Looks like the driveway is fairly fairly flat. There don't show much for grade changes over what's existing. And the front part of the land, according to the aerial photography, looked like there might have been some old field or something there. Um, they've drawn the upland review area as 100 feet. But we know that from the soil sinus report and application, it said that the soil scientist identified a water course and wetlands. And then he flagged the wetlands, but he didn't really clarify where the extent of the water course was. He's got a pond, it shows a pond on the, on the site development plan, that's sheet one of two. And then it shows wetlands delineations. But of course, water courses can include swamps, marshes, and bogs. Um, and there's no distinction as to what's a swamp marsh or bog on this plan. So my guess would be that the, the actual location is probably closer to 125 feet, being that it's all probably a water course, because you see a dotted line that looks like a water course symbol. It's a dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, or, or that could be the wetlands lot delineation. And it's not clear from, let's see, wetland soils. And they only show edge of water as a long dash and two, two, dot, two dots. So they're only identifying the pond as being the water course and the rest of it they're identifying as being wetlands, not necessarily water course. Um, it appears that the silt fence looks like it's encompassing what is the sediment. I mean, what is the area of disturbance? But then it shows a pile of stumps circled there. So I see Kathy Hicks is uh, here. Could we ask her what that pile of stumps is, what that's from? Is that something pre-existing or is that something that they want to put there? Hi, no, I think it's um, it's just a brush pile. We've been cleaning up trees and brush and um, it's okay. just a pile of, it's, it's just a pile of brush. I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, okay. Well, if you decide to burn it, don't forget to get an open burning permit first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I think this should be crack. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, there's a preliminary review from NDDH, um, but it's not the approval to construct. There's uh, conditions. Um, so is this the approval of the design, Dan? Does it say? design approval it says this is not to be construed as an approval to construct does not indicate uh northeast district endorses approval but we get these kind of in advance um that there's been a preliminary review um and that there's more work that goes into the plan then it gets i think it goes back to nddh and um the so typically NDDH does a design approval, but it's not a permit to construct. And then subsequent, the 
installer applies for a permit to construct, and then the installer gets the approval to construct. But typically, we've usually just accepted the design approval. It should say, it should reference the site plan. It should reference this site plan if it's a design approval. Is that what it says in the start of the letter from NDDH? We don't have it in our book, in our, in our, in our packet here. It, it's in the application packet. Um, the, it is? Yeah, the okay. second to the last of the 12 pager. Okay, hold on. Yeah, that's a design approval. That's not a, a approval to construct. This is typically what we have to have because then they're saying that it's an okay location for the septic system. Um, basically, that's all they're telling us. The, yeah, it's determined that the subject plan will meet the requirements of the technical standards for a five bedroom house based on the following. So they'll have to do all of these things. It says an engineer surveyors as built drawing to be including ties to the houses to be submitted for final inspection and approval of installation by NADDH. So that's a little different than when somebody just gets a repair. So yeah, this should be enough for us to move forward with this. Um, I think this should be processed as a wetlands agent approval. I don't see anything else in here. I'll just, com requires. I'll just comment on one of the attached documents. In, um, in a document from Joseph R. Thoreau to mm -hmm. Catherine Hicks, it's dated 4-21-2022. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that that maybe should be 2023, but I could be wrong. But I don't know if you could just follow up with that, uh, Dan. No, Let's it, say on the plan. It, oh. it, is, it is 2022. We did the, we did, he went out there before Dan went out there. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, typically the drawing, the, the plan should have um, the date of when the soil scientist went out there. Usually it's in the notes section. That's probably on sheet two. Um, let's see if it's there. Septic system design, specification, erosion, center control, survey notes, reference plan. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say anything about when the soil scientists did the. On the JND, on the JND civil engineers uh, uh, sheet, uh, it does say uh, 421 22 soil scientist report. Yeah, uh, but they should have put a note on the drawing. Oh, I see. To say, you see what I'm saying? It says wetland soils delineated by Joe Thoreau, April 2022. And field located by J and D. That's right, a note on the plan, just underneath the leaching field cross section AA. So they do have a note on the plan. Okay. So I move that application 04 23 01 single family home. Lot 7 1, Route 171 by Kathleen Hicks be processed as to wetlands agent approval. You don't have to second it. You can you could just approve it if you decided you wanted to as an actual permit. But I just figured having Dan sign off on it. I will second that. That's Bill my Lewinsky. motion. Yep. Second by Bill Motion's, Lewinsky. Motion's been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Bill Ruinsky to um, assign this as the wetlands agent approval for application 03. Uh, I'm sorry, 04-23-01, new single family home uh, in lot 7-1, Route 171, Kathleen Hicks. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Thank you.
Okay. Roman numeral six, new applications, letter B, application 04-23-02, in-ground pool and pool fence at 7 Millbrook Lane for Melissa Lewis. Okay. Let's look at this. <clears throat> First comment I have is, is there aren't any elevations, so we don't really know um, what the slope is. And they don't give the extent of land disturbance either. So you don't know how close they're gonna to get to the wetlands with grading. Well, judging by, well, yeah, just the location of the pool <clears throat> to wetlands, it says uh, 29.8 feet. Yeah, but this is just downstream from where that dam got removed. Yep. And and I'm I my recollection is is that's kind of like a gorgy area. Yep. So I would be a little concerned about exactly what the topography is. Uh, um, we could just um, make a quick comment about that. This is um, sure. Melissa Lewis on the call. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that this I'm um, Sean Lewis, I'm Melissa Lewis's husband. So that lot has been graded. There is a retaining wall that's part of that controlled spillway. Uh, our intent would be to uh, average the soil from the back of the property from where that pool is located. There'd be an additional retaining wall there. And then we'd be putting uh, hay bales and silt fence on that retained wall while construction was taking place. So you have some really large pine trees there. At least they were there in 2016. Are they still there? There were yes, three big are. ones. Yeah, yep. Are you planning on keeping them. those? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the retaining wall that you're talking about is landward towards your house from that or towards the brook side? It's it's beyond that. There's it's what actually, do you mean towards the brook? Yeah, it's a tiered wall uh, that controls that spillway that empties under the bridge that's uh, in that location. Yep. And yep. that water table is actually uh, lowered. They deconstructed the dam that originally mm -hmm. created that mill pond at one point and that water level was lowered. So where it's currently flagged as wetlands is actually just lawn right now. Uh, we haven't seen that get wet. Okay. So you've indicated on your drawing that you're 29 feet, eight inches from the wetlands. How did you figure out where the wetlands were? Uh, that wetlands boundary was taken off of the G uh, GIS map and superimposed on the property map. Okay, so you took it off of CIA's, the town's website, right? Correct. Okay. Because I'm looking at a different different application and it shows that those pine trees are right at the top of bank. They're, they're growing on the top of bank of, of that gorge. Is that correct? There's where those trees are, I would say about four feet behind them, there's a stone wall and that stone wall okay. has another extent about three feet and then that drops to the final depth of where the water spillway is. Okay. So how far is your grading going to go for, for the pool? Staying uh, in the lawn? Yes, it's staying in the lawn. Actually, where you see that elevation mark that's in front, that's inward, uh, that's uh, proximal to the house, that is approximately where the grading would end. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Dan, you've, you, you're screen sharing this? Yes. This photograph. Yep. So these are five foot contours, correct? Yes. Okay. So, boy, that's very different than what I got for the two foot LIDAR. 
from 2016. All right. So are you planning on filling over the, the roots of the trees with the excess material from the pool? No, the, the grading would not extend that far. Okay. All right. That's one of our favorite features of the property. So we're trying yeah, to do we're our best to not keep getting rid the of the pine trees. I absolutely love them. That was part of the thing that we absolutely loved about the house. So definitely keeping those. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's clearly in the Upland Review area. And because you got it in lawn, you might find it's better to use wattles instead of sill fence and hay bales. Do you know what a wattle is? Is that the circular bales? They're a circular that's, you know, tube style bale? That's the, yeah, it looks like a netting, a tubular netting, and it's filled with usually with hay or straw. Yes, I'm familiar. And it's usually about eight inches to 12 inches in diameter. It comes in various diameters and it comes in a roll and you unroll it and you stake it down and, and you don't have to trench it in and you can put it right on the grass and it works real well and it's not an obstruction to wildlife or amphibians or anything like that. Really works much better sometimes than silt fence and hay bales that are supposed to be dug into the ground. Thank you for that. I would take that uh, suggestion. I will uh, I'll review yeah. that with the excavator. Yeah, it's a little more expensive, um, but it's easier to install. It's not as much work installing and getting rid of it is a lot easier. You just slice it with a knife and you can rake out the hay. You're just gonna make sure you, if you've staked it in the ground, you've gotta make sure you take the stakes out. <laughs> Well, I, I don't, it's given the fact that I've seen from aerial photography that this is all lawn that's north of the pine trees. And if they use an erosion control and they keep it outside of the, the drip line of those trees, um, there, any kind of grading work, I don't see a problem with, with granting a, an approval for this. This can be a wetlands agent approval or it can be an individual permit. But it was received this month, correct, Dan? Yes. So if it comes in as a as an individual permit, we can't process it this month. But if it comes in as a wetlands agent approval, it can be issued sooner than that. So I would, if nobody has any objection, I would move that application 04-23-02 in ground pool and pool fence for 7 Millbrook Lane by Melissa Lewis. Be, a, be processed as a wetlands agent approval on the condition that the site plan be amended to show the location of, of the erosion and sediment control to be a u, to be utilized on the site, limiting the extent of disturbance. I'll second the motion. Motion. Motion's been, motion has been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Stuart Peasley, to. Um, Pass this on to approve this as a as a uh, an inland wetlands agent uh, um, approval process um, with conditions that again, Marla, would you repeat, repeat the, that the site plan state be amended to include the extent of disturbance as delineated by a so, uh, an erosion and sediment control device. I know it's a little different than what I said before, but it's close enough. Okay. And Dottie, after you re-listen to this uh, recording, hopefully you can get that down right. So, so basically in a nutshell that, that, uh, that, that this be uh, approved as a, for an inland wetlands agent uh, approval um, with conditions and um, the minutes will reflect what the conditions are. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain, so moved. Okay. All right. Moving on to administrative business, Roman numeral number seven, letter A, discussion of pond issue on Lakeview Drive, <clears throat> which is document one. Let's see what that is.
this is a revisit of um, Sorry. the issue we had. Uh, I don't remember the date and I didn't look it up on uh, Lakeview Drive. That pond was expanded and creating some uh, super saturated ground conditions. And I, um, I it, can help you out. Bill, that was application 11-21-11 by James Bentley, 33 Marcy Road. He wanted to expand the pond, replace the culvert pipe and concrete pipes and maintenance on the stream. And the end of that in our minutes of March 7th, 2022, um, it said, because the application has been withdrawn at this time, the only actions that can be properly distributed to engineers, uh, excuse me, made by the commission are to monitor the property and to be sure that all information is properly distributed to engineers and involved parties. This application will be revisited when resubmitted by James Bentley. And then I had a note that it was to be within 90 days of the date of withdrawal. So it's well past the 90 days of the date of withdrawal. Does that, is that what you remember, Bill? Yes, that's what I remember. Uh, I did bring it up at one meeting. Uh, yeah, we didn't really visit it then, but uh, uh, you know, I asked what, ha what had happened to that, but it's come up again now anyway, so we can proceed with the latest information. Who, who retained uh, the engineer? Does anyone know how that was? Uh, uh, the board at uh, Lake Bungie um, okay. retained the engineer. So my recollection is, is right now we have a condi an unauthorized condition out there. When Mr. Bentley started doing his work out there, he should have gotten a permit ahead of time. He didn't. He submitted an after the fact application, which was considered to be insufficient. And um, he withdrew it with the idea that he was going to resupply it, resubmit it after he got uh, an engineer to take a look at it. And apparently he never did that or he didn't resubmit an application. So we are in an enforcement proceeding at, or approaching an enforcement proceeding because of conditions. My question is, is this something that's subject to DEP's dam safety unit? Meaning what, what is the hazard classification of that embankment now? Is that a class B hazard because it could cause a potential to property damage? And if it was, then DEP has the jurisdiction over that embankment. If DEP calls it a class A dam, then they, they wouldn't establish their jurisdiction over it. We would have the responsibility for taking actions for activities that occurred to wetlands and water courses associated with that embankment and the grading work that he did. So I don't recall whether we issued any notice of a violation on that. We no. did not, as okay. far as I know. Ashley was handling it. Yeah. And we also don't and, really... And also don't really know the slope in the in the pond on that side well he increased the water body he elevated the the berm if my recollection was um which and he was trying to say that he was and he did some channelization for off of the was it bungie hill road yeah is that the road to the north to the upslope from it yes yes And so water used to pan out over the field before it would get into the pond. So it'd have a chance to absorb some. And it was my understanding that he had channelized it so that it could mm -hmm. get to the pond quicker without flooding right. over the land. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe we did take any enforcement action. So I think what it has to do is to go back and take a look at what evidence we have about the activities. I don't know what evidence Ashley left behind, what photographs she had, what's in the file, in uh, that November file. That would have what, been November of 21. With my, rec with my recollection as it is, I, I thought that he was 
directed to uh, acquire uh, engineering of the conditions mm -hmm. and come up with a proposal to remediate the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and he had, we had 90 days from with withdrawal of the application to do that. We, we haven't heard anything. Nope, and it's been well over 90 days. No. So I think it's at a point in time where we have to issue some kind of notice of violation um, at a minimum. Um, um, in the meantime, I also think that there should be some kind of referral to DEP DM safety to get an indication as to whether or not this is something that they would be subject to regulating as a class B or a class BB hazard dam. I don't know if it is or not. The fact that you have the street immediately down slope and you have a couple of houses immediately down slope, I don't know how they would view that. I know that they have taken some dams that, I saw a dam that was 12 feet high in Thompson that they didn't take any jurisdiction. They said it was a class A dam. Well, it is technically jurisdiction, but they don't regulate its modification because they said if it were to fail, it would only fail into a large wetland system and not damage any homes or roads. Well, that's not the kind of situation you have here, so. It's also important to recognize what the engineer's report consisted of, and he's expressed his concerns greatly, I well, would say. Carl Akimovic is a well-known professional engineer who deals with dam safety issues. Um, so if he's raising concerns, then this is something maybe um, we need to do two things, which would be notify DEP and ask them to evaluate the situation for their jurisdiction and to issue a notice of violation for the alterations that have already occurred and require him to submit an application, you know, to submit an engineered plan and then settle out whether or not DEP has jurisdiction or not later. Sounds reasonable. Just for the record, I did visit this site when we first was brought up by Mr. Caffrell, who no, no longer owns that property. And it's probably, my recollection is a, at least a good 400 feet to the drain so you'd be uh, having a drainage along the road. This is a gravel road for approximately 400 feet to get to the, the drain for the current topography. There is another drain that's much closer to the east, but it would take some engineering to get there. But in the, that 400 feet of getting to that catch basin, that water seeps under the road and it was freezing up in the uh, septic systems there. Hmm. Yeah, I was concerned uh, on, uh, you know, the layering of the, the berms, whether they were compacted properly, the, the nature of the soil, soil type. I don't think that it was carefully done and that I think was also expressed in the engineering letter. Well, that's why my concern of the slope inside the pond, because if it's really mm -hmm. steep on that side also, then that's a great potential to fail. Yeah. And Carl's letter seems to imply that that's already potentially starting because he talked about <clears throat> there being some kind of discharge coming out from the middle of the berm. Yes. So this, that seepage is a, is a concern because that seepage could be piping and mining fine particles out, weakening that embankment. So you could end up with a really heavy, heavy storm and then have that thing blow out just from the pressure and the lack of adequate compaction. And you could see one of the pictures that it actually looks like that's the water's almost if not exact actually overtopping the, the berm. Yeah. You said some land got changed hands, Bill? Uh, that, that's not think, the Bentley property though. No, I, across the street, David Caffro brought it originally. Uh, oh, this is when okay. we're in between wetlands agents. Um, 
I followed up with him and encouraged him to make an official complaint, um, but he didn't. He had sold the property, and uh, at the time when I first looked at it, he had a small excavator there, and it appeared that the septic system was pumped uphill almost to the road, and that everything was frozen in the, from the excessive water in the ground. Um, is there anyone from the Lake Association that can tell us what they have seen recently that there's may have caused changes? There's both myself, Ross Ellison, uh, the roads chair, and uh, Ivana, who is our safety um, rep. So um, either one of us can speak. Uh, I might have a little more information on that. I'm on uh, Lake all the time, uh, Ivana's uh, part, uh, seasonal. Yeah, so Russ, yeah, you, you've been there personally, so you have a better. Okay, very good. Uh, yes, what would you, what was the question, please? What, what changes have you seen recently? Have there been any recent changes that you've seen? As far as. I mean, is, it, is it seeping more? It, it seems to, it, this became uh, an issue when one of our board members noticed after a large uh, storm that it really scared them. Uh, so we uh, asked the uh, engineer, Carl, I can't pronounce his last name, to come back out. Akam and Akamovic. Thank you. Carl Akamovic. To, to come back out and reassess. And uh, we thought common sense wise that it looked like it was seeping more and that it was wet or soggier. And the, you know, when you start looking at it, of course, you think it's something. And then when the professional tells you, but what you can see, it seems to me to be more seepage through the um, embankment uh, as a general uh, statement. You know, you put your foot up a little bit on it, and it feels a little bit, you know, squishy, like a like you were stepping through a bog or something. At, at some points, at the spots that look wet, you know, underneath the leaves. Does um, Dan, do you have any idea what the assessor's reference is for this property? I'm trying to look it up on Woodstocks because it's clearly not 33 Marcy, Marcy Road. That's his home. That's not the site of the property. That's what was listed in the uh, minutes, but that's not the correct location for the property. What What is the correct location for the property? Do we the, know? The Bentley property? Yes. Uh, so... Are you looking for a map block and lot? Yep. Uh, uh, 7272 slash 34 slash 06. 7272 slash 34 slash 06. 06. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Definitely not the address it was given in the minutes. Okay, cross that off. If 33 Marcy is listed as um, the owner's this home. address. Uh, so yeah. for mailing purposes. Yeah, that's what they put in the minutes. They should have put in the minutes what the actual address of the property was. Um, 72 dash 34 dash 06. Oh, great. Might help if I had NUMS lock on. No, it's not coming up. Search. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. Why am I not seeing it? Well, I can, uh, if you if you want, I can. Oh, good, you're screen sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. But that's the vision. Do we have a map? the CAI map. Okay.
Oh, okay, that's well. That's all one parcel, huh? Hmm. I see it now. Okay, got it. Now the town has a drainage easement that goes across Bunga Hill Road. Yes. My recollection is. Correct. Okay. Okay. And how comfortable do you feel about issuing a notice of violation? Do you need any help on that? I want to set my eyes on it first um, and then go through okay. the engineer's letter and and in, uh, in more detail. Uh, but I can issue okay. this um, if the commission would like me to report back to them what I see and then give the instruction. I'm, I'm fine either way. I, I think we have enough information from our past actions that we we need to take an action. Yep. So I don't think it should hold you up. You have the authority as the wetlands agent to issue a notice of violation and bring it to the next meeting. Um, and as well as make a, a, a referral over to DEP dam safety and ask them to look mm -hmm. at it. Um, I think that would be helpful to do both those things before the next meeting. Okay, I'll uh, report back to the commission. Okay. Marla or Dan, I have a question about um, the documents from previous meetings on the website, um, on the, the town website. Uh, I'm noticing that for 2021, we only have documents for uh, January through May. Uh, do either of you know the reason why we don't have any of the fall, summer fall meetings on there? No, I don't know. Okay. That would be something for maybe Crystal. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not it. sure. Um, it was uh, on Ashley's watch, but that's um, what I inherited on the OneDrive. Okay. Uh, so I, there might have been an interim agent in between that didn't utilize the OneDrive or had their own OneDrive account that um, I don't have the digital documents for those anymore, but I can... Okay seek those out to fill in that gap there because yeah i'm sure we had uh, meetings that second half of the year right right yeah and, and i was looking for that to see if i had we had anything on, on the bentley uh you know on that storm thing because i think it was later in 2021 oh uh the bentley was no the application came in in november because it had a november application number yeah right um, okay so. But we didn't take action. Final, the last thing I found was in, I think it was in March of 22. Okay. Um, well, uh, let's say 20 July. Let me uh, quickly look it up. Uh, November, James Bentley. It was a new application on the November 15th meeting of 21. Um, right. Okay. And it was application 11 21 11. That was so that's when it was first received. And by March, it had been withdrawn. And I'm sure we talked about it at every single meeting in between. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, my recommendation to you, Dan, is to you know to look at those some of those interim meetings, and see you know any you know comments or statements that were made in that time. So yeah, the the minutes will help uh, frame everything. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm looking at the aerial photography that was available in 2016, and there is no no defined channel coming down off of Bungie Hill Road at all. But when you look at it in 2019, there now starts to be a, a defined channel that comes down into that ponded area. And what it looks like now, I have no idea. But And the current satellite shows a, a, a channel coming down into the pond. So there wasn't one in 2016, but there's currently a, clearly one now. So I wonder if some kind of development happened in the upper watershed that caused increased flows um to come down across Bungie Hill Road. There hasn't been there hasn't it doesn't been look like it. No. 
Yeah. I don't see any. I don't recall any. No. Oh. Oh. Didn't they pay Fungi Hill? Wasn't that, oh. wasn't there an issue east of that that caused a problem to the lake and they had to put in a sediment trap or sediment basin on the north side of Bungie Hill Road after they paved it? So I wonder if when they paved the road, whether they made any drainage changes, you know, like put in curbing that wasn't there before or something like that that could have concentrated the flow at that location. Nothing significant. Okay. No, that was just a thought. So that's seen. I drive that road quite often. Okay. All right. So can we move forward with letter B? Man. Okay, administrative business, Roman numeral seven, letter B, discussion of easement and drainage project on Lakeview Drive. That would be me whenever you're ready. Ross Ellison, Lake Bungie Rose. Go ahead, Ross, you're on. All right, thank you uh, everybody for this and the previous, thank you. Um, so we have some generous homeowners that are going to grant us an easement uh, to let some water off of our roads through their properties and into the lake. And uh, Carl Asimovich is working on plans for us. I wanted to know if we're, we will submit the plans when Carl does them. We're just, we have to go through the process of getting a temporary easement to start the work and have the drawings done. Um, we're working on that right now, hopefully in a week or so, that'll be ready. Um, what I wanted to know is that if I could have permission or if the lake could have permission to start removing the trees before the whole permit was uh, approved by you folks, or if that's something we have to wait on. Far, Bill Verwinski, as far as I know, the, the removing of the trees by just cutting them down, although Marla can correct me, the removal of the trees themselves would be acceptable, but you can't stump the, the ground. You can't do any grading or excavation. Do you agree with that, Marla? I do. Okay. I do. Understood. So if you're gonna drag them out, then that's, you're sort of disturbing the soil uh, in that sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure the gentleman who's cutting them is gonna use one of those giant things where you cut them and you pull them out. I'm not positive about that, um, but the nature of this particular job is a long tree line with uh, a, a fair amount of uh, mature trees that happen to be kind of on the way out anyway. It's exactly in a, a knoll where Mr. Camper probably would have put the, uh, or should have put the drainage in anyway. But back to the tree part, there's a, quite a bit of, quite a few trees. It's my understanding that the, the um, tree surgeon has a machine that's gonna cut them and move them out. So there still would be equipment going in and out to your point. Uh, As long as he's not grubbing and pulling the stumps out of the ground at this point in time, it, the removal of the logs, it shouldn't be a problem. If they have any disturbance, you wanna make sure that you shouldn't have any disturbance because they can cut, I've been watching them cut the trees in Woodstock and Thompson and they basically you know, cut the crown out and then they cut off as they go down. They have a, a sometimes they have a crane that actually holds the, the tree stump and then lowers it down because you don't want it landing on a house and you don't want it going across the road either. So they have to do it like in pieces. Mm -hmm. And those usually have no problem at all. They don't cause a problem. So I don't see a problem with that. But you know, it's gonna, if you're doing a direct discharge to the lake, it's gonna require a permit, which means when we receive the application, we cannot render a decision for 30 days in any case. So the quicker you get that application in, and you probably don't want to do this anyways until low flow period, which would be in August or early September anyways. 
So we're going to look for more engineers' comments and what we're doing, of course. Okay. So we'll move on to letter C, discussion of application permit fees. So um, I've been working on permitting fees for Thompson, trying to revise theirs and trying to figure out what the costs of, we can charge through regulation, we can charge the, the cost of processing an application to the applicant, but it has to go in our regulations. The, what I'm coming up with is costs. If I base it on um, this amount of staff time, I think that it takes to review an application, to log it in, um, and to then go through the processing, it's, it's variable. And, um, but it's coming up in the range of, of just for the processing fee, just to, to create the files, to document it, get it in the minutes, you know, for the app, for the whoever is doing that administrative work, it's about $200. That also covers the cost of the legal notice on the decision on the application and the $60 that has to go to the state. So a hundred, almost $110 go right out the door for the legal notice and the state fee. And then the extra money the 90 or so dollars is just the administrative staff time that it takes to go through and review it for completeness and to create the files and get it on the agenda. After that, there can be additional costs depending on the complexity of the application and, and what's required for review. Um, work that's in the upland review area is less than work that's actually in wetlands and water courses the amount of review changes. And so the price goes up. Um, so what I'm finding out is generally wetlands agent approvals are looking at about $300 somewhere in that neighborhood and individual permits for work actually in wetlands is closer over 400 by the time you get done. But that's just a preliminary that I've got so far. So what I can do, we're a little at a disadvantage in Woodstock because Woodstock can't seem to get its act together with regards of its paying its staff adequately. So, and providing enough staff time. Um, right now, Thompson is, is just entering into, I think what's gonna be a development boom. And I think Woodstock is gonna follow after that, after Thompson gets kind of saturated a little bit, they just changed their zoning and their, reg and their subdivision regulations. And there's already a lot of more pressure for subdivisions coming into Thompson. And I foresee that it's gonna ultimately spread over into Woodstock because the pressure is coming out of Worcester and Webster. Uh, it's, getting, it's getting more expensive in Massachusetts. So they're finding that if they come to Connecticut, they can, the commute isn't so bad. It's what, 40 minutes to, to, to Worcester. It's 40 minutes maybe to Providence and eh, maybe a little longer. But so I think we have to start thinking about looking at our regulations and we have to do it. That's a two month process at least. So what I can do is I can share with you the Excel spreadsheets that I started to develop in, in Thompson. And it's really easy be, to change the amounts. You can either change the time or you can change the, the cost per hour. And it just, it, it just you know waves right through all the other calculations. So you can play around with it. So I can share that with you if you want. Um, you can look at it and see what you think. So the next time we get together and talk about it, we can talk about you know, what kinds of things you might wanna change for Woodstock. If you want me to do that, then I can ship that off to you. Remember, it's just preliminary and it's just in the process of, of being thought out. For reference only. And I'm also thinking that there's a, I'm sorry, go ahead. For reference only. Yeah. Exactly. Preliminary exactly. status, that's all. And I'm thinking there's a lot more things that could be handled as 
maintenance and enjoyment of residential home that could be approved by a, a, the wetlands agent without a, an application fee, without a legal notice having to go out, if it's just a declaratory ruling. Um, it's just creating the file and and I don't believe there is a charge. There's the $60 charge is not for declaratory rulings, it's for actual permits. So you could have a lot more um, people coming through that like the swimming pools. A swimming pool could come through under maintenance and enjoyment of a residential home. It doesn't go through a legal notice. It doesn't pay the $60, but maybe you make them pay a processing fee to create the file and to hold on to that information so you have it in case there's a problem down the road. So I foresee that some of the stuff that we're seeing as applications for wetlands agent approvals could actually be processed as maintenance and enjoyment residential home. It would not include new homes. New homes would have to come through as a, as a permit, as a wetlands agent approval and licensed. But if it's something that somebody wants to add a shed or they want to put in a, a swimming pool, or they want to put a deck on, or they want to do some kind of expansion of their home. Um, maybe that can be covered as a maintenance and enjoyment of residential home and not go through a full fledged permitting. Um, but these are things we need to think about whether or not we want to do that or not. Yeah, I think it makes sense to set kind of tiers for, mm. uh, you know, there's a alternate, uh, in alternates, uh, a type. An alternate type one would be, like you say, a building. Alternate type two would be some uh, grading or timber removal or, or harvesting, timber harvesting, or you know something to that effect. Type one, type two, type three, and then type three and four being less uh, significant and maybe just wetlands agent approval. But the one and two would definitely need review. That kind of a uh, staging mm -hmm. but that could lower the cost for individual homeowners which i i think you don't yeah. want to have individual homeowners paying 300 dollars because they want to put a deck on their house or they want to put in a, a an above yeah. ground swimming pool in their backyard i mean That's you, you wouldn't want them paying that price yeah. uh, when they could be considered maintenance and enjoyment of a residential home yep that makes sense Marla, do our regs need amending to allow for that? Yes. Yep. It, it takes a rewrite. So when you're going and rewriting for fees, you would rewrite the section that dealt with, you know, work in the upland review area being signed off by uh, as a declaratory ruling by the agent, which mm -hmm. it doesn't say that now because they, they follow the the model regs. The EP's yeah. model regs, which the model regs don't take into account upland review areas per se, as uh, uses permitted as of right, non regulated uses. It's kind of silent on it. So we would still want to review those decisions mm -hmm. at each meeting? Yeah. Yeah. It's in a, still, in a report. You want to see them, but you wouldn't yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Because then if it, if, it, if something happened saying we, we didn't like the way the agent was issuing them or we're finding that there's problems when there shouldn't be problems, then we might remove you know, from the agent those authorities because those authorities can be granted by, you know, by vote of the commission. So for example, when I was unavailable in Thompson to be their agent, uh, in my absence, Dan was voted by the commission to act in my absence for enforcement matters only. He wasn't issuing authorizations for wetlands agent approvals, but he was doing all the enforcement. So um, there are ways that you can designate your agent what their authorities could be. And it could set it up in the regulations that way. But you have to think about it. Sorry, I wanted to just say, I realized I misspoke. What I meant to say was it's an alteration. All these work, all these applications, these work applications that come in are an alteration of some type or another. So uh, the alteration of the existing conditions to accommodate the intentions of the landowner, whether it be a swimming pool or a house or a driveway. So that alteration type is what I've been trying. That's what I was trying to say. So 
you know, some are serious and some are, like you say, they're just the maintenance and enjoyment of the home. But uh, that may be a way to approach it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you so want me to send out that Excel spreadsheet? Yes. Send yeah. to you guys? Yes. Send that like to it. us. And let's yep. let's get this on the agenda for uh, the next month's meeting um, for further discussion. And um, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Do that. All right. Um, administrative business Roman numeral seven, letter D, review of updated permit application. Okay, and where can we find, where do we have that? Is that um, in last month's uh, documents? Or? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to, to deliver on the, the, the alterations that we discussed. Um, we brought up potentially making uh, a checkbox. Uh, so yes, in, uh, on the fourth, 323 meeting um the up the most recent version of the permit application is an attachment on that page you had that isn't that application 0423-02 lewis the swimming pool didn't they use the new form for that yeah the old one and the new one and i don't know um it does look familiar like, like that. I don't know uh, where they would have got it from unless mm -hmm. Ashley disseminated some or, um, but this isn't public as far as I understand. Well, that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Um, it looked like a compilation of both forms. You know, they used the short form and then, then put in the permit application for a permit which is not a wetlands agent approval, it's a permit, but. So I don't even know if that's the correct language that you were working from. I didn't check that, I didn't compare that, sorry. Where was it, the, uh, the, the form? What, which so, which doc, meeting with the documents for previous meetings and it's the four mm -hmm. three twenty three um, meeting documents. Okay. All right. Oh, it would help if I get the right website. Yeah. And is it the attachment one down in the bottom, or do we click on the link embedded in the? Uh... It's directed to that attachment. The link is directed to the attachment. Okay. I got it. Okay. I see it. Yeah, it looks like the same form. I'll bet you they picked it off of your, your documents from 4323. Oh, no, yeah, that's probably yep. how it occurred. That's what they did. Oh, I should have wrote draft through it. Yeah. I'll uh, correct that when I'm in the office tomorrow.
Now, are these um, other forms, the DEP reporting form and the watershed aquifer protection notification form, are they on the website also as a, as a document that they can download? Because I know the DEP form, if you go on DEP's website and you download that form, it's actually a fillable form. You know, it, it opens up certain areas are editable and other areas are not. Um, and that could be posted on the website. And you could have a link right in there as to where the where it is. Same thing for the watershed aquifer protection notification form. That's a pretty standardized form. So the deep form is part of the long form app, the current long form application. Yep. And I and it should also be a part of um uh the the the, up, the new application as well as that the watershed reporting because otherwise um we'd have to chase them down if if it's not part of this application packet i don't think uh, so, they, they go either way to to go find that form so what i'm suggesting is that where it says other forms on page two a completed DEP reporting form is required. See below. See, please see below attachment one. That's where I put the the link to the uh, web page. Meaning, if you had it, if you okay. had it, uh, the a link there that they could just click and it would send you to that portion of the town's web page where you could fill out the form. So rather than you having have, a a six page packet, it's a four page packet exactly. with a couple links. Okay. Yep. Yep, and then and then and same thing with the watershed aquifer protection notification form. That could be the 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 sample form can be on the website. I don't know. Do you guys have? Do we have a um, documents and forms section on our website? Uh, let's see. We just have the long form and short form application in this in the sidebar links. Okay, so if we had uh, changed that into something that had a. a because you can create folders that have a number of, of forms in there. Yep. Yeah. So if you look at Thompson's, it has, you know, forms and, and documents and forms, and you click on that, and it'll actually send you to a whole list of, of um, documents that are, that are fillable. If you go to Thompson's Inland Wetlands Commission, you see it says doc, forms and documents at the bottom. And you click that, it would open up a whole a whole list of forms that are that are used, the different application forms. You had it there almost for a second in your screen sharing. Is that up? No, you got Woodstock up. You had Thompson for a moment, but then you you lost it. If you went back in your history, you could pick it up. That's uh Does that work now? I'm still seeing Woodstock. Uh, um, uh, it says, oh, let's see. Try it again. Oops. OK. All right, so you need to go to Government, Inland Wetlands Commission, Government. There you go, see documents and forms in the left-hand side, click that. And then you scroll down to Inland Wetlands and that's all the forms. Yep. So on there, you, you could put in uh, the DEP reporting form. Something similar like that you could do in Woodstock potentially. Yeah, it'd be Those a, are all the a, forms. a cleaner way to present it. Because uh, every uh, the first question I get is which application do I fill out? Um, mm -hmm. And I think having both the the long form and the short form in that sidebar uh, confuses people. Uh, directing them to a form mm -hmm. page might be a little. Uh, mm -hmm. smoother operation mm -hmm. anyways that's a thought yep 
I have a question about what I've noticed. Application forms, a lot of times will say that the names and mailing addresses of the adjacent, adjacent property owners. Now all the GIS programs, Woodstocks and Thompson's, both allow you to create a list of adjacent property owners. And Thompson, I know you can set it up for 25 feet, 100 feet back from the property boundary line, you know, cause they use it for planning and zoning. But Wellens, we never use it. We've never, gone to a public hearing that requires setting out notices to the abutting property owners. Why do we ask for that information when we never use it? Does anybody know? I don't know. It's a good point though. It is the, the process for wetlands is different than the zoning. In, in that I'm public, almost, the public hearing. Yeah, I'm almost tempted to, to knock that off. That yeah. it's it's a it's just a waste of, of time, waste of information. Agreed. And under under D, applicant certification that, that well, unless unless there's an actual signature on that, that the applicant certifies all of these things, then it means nothing to be in the form. So the, on the signature page, it talks about entry onto private property. And then the, on the applicant certification, it's saying that the application's complete to the best of, the not, best of their knowledge. There is no certification as indicated in the applicant certification under item D, other information that may, that may be requested. So, oh, may be requested. Oh, so that's not required information. So when do we decide that we want all these things Under, on page two? Three, excuse me, page three, it's on page three. Other information that may be requested from the agency should say by the agency. Um, wouldn't we always want to consider alternatives that would have less impact? Shouldn't that be required? Or no? Most of the stuff we're dealing with. Repeat your question. Shouldn't we always be asking for alternatives? That yes. would have less impact. Did they consider anything? What were their alternatives that they considered? Shouldn't we always be asking that? Not just something that we might ask at a later time. Shouldn't that be part of the, the form up above? You know. I, yeah, I think there has to be a, a preliminary discussion or decision about what. You know, is it an what type of alteration it is? And why is it that? And it could be considered as one, two, or three, or A, B, or C, whatever you want. But, but those those are what require the determination uh, early on. You know what I mean? No, I'm not quite sure. I'm looking well, at alternatives. Yeah. Not alterations. So what, alternatives. Yeah, but it's the same kind of thing. It's it's a choice. It's an option. And, and well, so an option. it's an option based on what's needed. Don't, don't our regulations require that when the permitted application is filed, that they list any other prudent, uh, uh, prudent alternatives or whatever that? Well, you got letter A right feasible there. Feasible alternatives. You have letter A only... there. So, you know, alternatives or categories or, or whatever, but they, they, I think that's, you know, 
the classification that needs to be to, is what we're trying to get our heads around here. And if we can, we can help that. It's it's going to streamline things down the road because this this problems these problems that we have like with that that Bentley property really um, was was a question mark is how how do we address this one in particular and uh, I think we run into that a lot that's why I'm I'm sort of leaning on trying to come up with these classifications. Well, the consideration of alternative is not a classification. It's just saying you have a particular basic thing you want to do. And how did you consider doing it that would have less impact on the on the wetlands watercourse environment? Most of the time, if it's just working the upland reviewery, there isn't a lot of alternatives True. Uh, that would have less impact. But when you're dealing work in wetlands and watercourses, i.e. an individual permit, you want to look at, was there an alternative staying out of the wetlands? Why yeah. didn't you choose that? um those are the kinds of things that i'm thinking of should we be asking that all the time or not one question i have is when that when it comes to that kind of question marla then i think that we are functioning more as a uh a partner in design or whatever you know should we be having no that? i don't think so no i don't I think don't, we're partner in design we're asking we're asking them what did they consider and why didn't they choose something of a lesser impact? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the weighing off process. We're not telling them how to design it. We're just asking the question. Okay. And if they can come back and say, well, I didn't do it this way because I have to do this over here. And because I'm doing this over here, I can't do it here. You know, th that's not the same thing as categorizing. It's just explaining why they laid it out the way they laid it out. Um, that's a little different. Categories are like. Uh, um, well, this is up, up on review or, or not. Right, you know? right. That's more categorizing it. Right. But in the upland review, if you're only doing a minor amount or a major amount of work. Yeah. I think we need to think about page three again. This is more advisory. Page three becomes more that we may ask for these things. We might not ask for it in the initial application, but we would we could ask for it at a later time. So three, actually, I'm not sure if it belongs there. Page three. How does anybody else feel about that? Well, we should probably be uh, requesting the alternatives anyways up front. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my thought too. But all that other stuff, I mean, significant impact activities, that's something we have to tell them, yeah, we have, this is a significant activity. We're going to go to a public hearing. We want all this other stuff. That's a little different than being in the initial application form. See what I'm saying? Yep. So if we were to take out page three and have just page one, two, and four, is that enough information for us? Is that enough information for us with a diagram, soils map, And do we want to use the soils map as a, a, for activities proposed in wetlands and watercourses? Because we know that delineation is not accurate. The soils map is not accurate. It's well, unless, based on a two to three acre scale. Unless you put something that's for reference that they have to be field uh, verified. Right. So we may want to have the, we may want to have a soil scientist verify the location of wetlands. And I don't know how our rakes read about how they're to be delineated 
meaning do they have to show on a on a map or do they have to be the actual character of the land determines whether it's subject to jurisdiction. So that may be an additional piece of information we want an applicant to do is to go get a soil scientist and delineate the wetlands. I don't know that we would need it on all cases. Like we've done a couple of applications here where we've based it on looking at the topography and the general characteristics without actually having a soil scientist delineate it. That's for the homeowners, but for a new home, should always have a soil scientist delineate the wetlands on the on the property and put on the survey map. But if it's simply a homeowner coming up with a drawing, the actual flagging of wetlands may not be as critical. You may already have that delineation on a, on a copy on the land records. What do you think, Mark? I think, <clears throat> hmm. I think that maybe we should keep page three, but say other information that will be requested by the agency. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you're right, Marla. I think all, you know, we usually do ask for, you know, the uh, names and addresses of all the adjacent property owners, the, you know, all that. Yeah, that's, I just, I say, yeah, that, that should be required. And so- what Why, do, what do we use it for? We don't use it for anything. The names and mailing addresses of the adjacent property owners, when have we ever used it? Um, I think it's to, because isn't part of the permit uh, is that the that adjacent landowners are supposed to be notified? Um, nope. That, Nope, it's a legal notice in the newspaper. Just a legal notice in the newspaper. Oh. I guess I've been around. Even long if enough. we go to public hearing, there's even if you go to public hearing, there's no requirement that the abutters be notified in the regs. It's planning and zoning they have to, but in the wetlands doesn't. Oh, okay. Wow. I wonder I in the early years, because as I've been doing this for, you know, 25, 30 years now, <laughs> I just, I remember, I remember we would often ask, you know, have you notified the abutting property owners, you know, and, and if it was done on any properties that were within, uh, you know, a water supply area, you know, has the, the neighboring water supply company been notified, things like that. That's statutory. That's a statutory requirement. Right, right. They have no, yeah, that's different. Same thing with the 500 feet uh, within a, a, a municipal boundary. A municipal boundary, right, right. Yeah, all those stuffs are statutory requirements, the uh, uh, certifications. Right. Those are all in the statute. Okay, all right. I, I have a question to that, and I don't know if I was going to raise it during citizens' comments, but perhaps I'll wait. <laughs> it, it's, it's a hypothetical question along the same lines as to really uh, oversight and monitoring um, uh, non-compliant conditions, uh, how, how, how to address that properly. And, um, you know, we have a lot of situations where we just don't have the resources to be able to, uh, you know, check these kind of things well. And, and the attitude in the public is, well, I'd rather seek uh, forgiveness than permission. <laughs> so, so a lot of times we're kind of stuck and, and the person that bears a lot of the brunt of that would be the neighbors. And um, that's where I think some of what we're talking about bridges into, you know, how can we cover that in the application? Um, so that it is um, in writing in case that there has to be something done in the future. And that's a very important consideration for us. And how do we do it? Um, we've got to set benchmarks, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, but, but going along with that, if you have the names and the mailing addresses, it at least alerts the property owner that his 
whatever he's doing may have impact on his neighbors. Right. So it would have value in doing that. Well, do we so do we have to do we have to follow the the ordinance on that, or is that something we have to write or create? I couldn't tell you. That's a question. That's a question for further consideration. I think. Yeah. It does. You know. You know. The fortunate thing about, you know, for example, we're, we as a case study, we're looking at at the Bentley property. Um, but the fortunate thing is that we did have a benchmark. You know, we can go back to the fact that you know it was recorded and and not followed up on. So therefore we, we know how to proceed. But if these things sort of slip by in, in limbo, that's that's when that's what poses the big problem. The bigger problem. So being able to define these, where does that start? It might I think it best starts in the application. So you want to leave uh, page three in? For now, if yes. you can. Yeah, so leave three in. And um, uh, uh, you made your point about the statute requirements. So, so we, could, we could delete B, you know, and just, you know, we don't need the names and mailing addresses of adjacent property owners. Um, but, but I, you know, I agree that the, the, the top header, it should say other information that I guess you could leave it as maybe requested by the agency. Right. Um, but um, yeah. But the alternatives, you want to take that out of the, the May. Right. And make that a requirement. Right. So I don't know if we can move that up into the upper previous block. Other under form, other forms, or no? Um, purpose and purpose and description of activity for which authorization is requested. We give a bunch of lines, and after that, could we say other prudent and, and feasible alternatives, or something like that? That would, that would be more appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be I'd be okay with that doing that. Yeah. Mark, uh, this is Dan. Where'd you want that again? In 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 part two, property site information. Okay. Um, uh, under purpose and description of activity for which authorization is requested. Okay. You've got detailed project description and purpose and erosion sediment controls, and you've got one, two, three, four lines for that. And then you have area and acres or square feet of wetlands, blah blah blah, and yep. you give yourself three. Lines. So then, right right after that third line. You know, you could insert um, other consideration of other prudent and feasible alternatives. And you want uh, a few lines given to that for a, a short explanation that they, you know. Um, yeah, or you could make it an attachment. You know, you could say, um, uh, yeah, go ahead, Marla. I'm going to say the section on called note. An application that requires local and the ones may also be regulated by the federal government, blah, blah, blah. All that whole section there should be yep. whittled down to, to a couple of lines. First of all, I'm not so sure that's the correct address for the Army Corps anymore. Yeah. And uh, DEP does not have an Inland Water Resources Division anymore. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. That whole section has to be reworked. Um, and I, there's no statutory requirement for us to notify regarding the Army Corps of Engineers. There is under the MS4 permitting a requirement, but 
Woodstock is not governed by the MS4 permit. So a lot of this stuff that's in here under note doesn't have to be there. Yeah. It's not required. I mean, it's. So Dan, Dan, for your reference, as you're working on this for us, the D, it would be the DEEP Land and Water Resources Division. Land and Water Resources Division? Division, right. Affectionately called L word <laughs> by us DEP folks. That went when, when I'm did, suggest Go ahead, Marla. Yeah. I'm suggesting just remove that whole section. Just remove that whole Don't section. Don't even have that in there. Okay. Yeah. Why, why does it have to be there? There's nothing that requires us to advise people to go to the Army Corps of Engineers or go to DEP. If we were under MS4 permitting authority, we'd be required under the the general permit to do that under a registration, right. but we don't register it, so we don't have okay. to do that. Good point. And to be honest with you, the Army Corps of Engineers is so, so overwhelmed right now. They want people to notify them that they're doing work, but then they don't do anything with it. So to me, we could have like in a handout, like what, what Stu did for the town saying, you know, this is the process. Oh, and by the way, you might also want to contact these people regarding any permits you might need from them. That's where it would be appropriate, but not in the application form. Yeah. Right. How about DE, so the DEP be... dams unit? So like, you know, we're going to be going to them to do a, help us out with evaluating on, you know, if this one particular site near Lake Bungie is, is a class A or a class B. Um, so should we, you know, make a citation for the DEP dams unit? No. Not no. in the application form, not okay. in the application form. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is DEP dams is, uh, I've been dealing with them on North Grosvenordale Pond Dam, which is a high hazard class dam that's in unsafe condition and they haven't been able to get it dealt with for uh, for five years now. So um, uh, yeah, yeah they've got some problems there. So um, at least sending a referral over and asking them to give us advice is one thing, but um, directing people to go to them, I don't know that that would be of any benefit in an application form. Got it. Um, I would okay. say that the, by dropping that whole section out about the notes would give you a lot of extra space for project description and alternatives. Prudent and feasible alternatives. And I would also knock off, yeah, the discussion of alternatives gives you space. I would also drop off, attach a copy of soils map section and a copy of the US Geological Survey map section. Well, where are they going to get that from? I mean, that doesn't exist anywhere that I know of. I mean, the USGS maps, um, the DEP's regulations for the reporting form said that they were going to provide a copy of that to every town. But how, are you, how is the public going to get a copy of the USGS survey map? They don't even sell them, I don't know, in the store anymore, in the DEP store. They don't have, I don't think they, I think you'd have to go online to get those if you can find them online. So I'm yeah. thinking that line has to go too. You yeah. attach a, a copy of the soils map section. You might want to have a reference to the town's um, uh, GIS is requiring a map from the town's GIS application showing the locus of the property. That might be of value in place of the soils map and the USGS map. There is a USGS store online yeah but they don't have all the they don't have the usgs maps all available some of them oh. are out of print but dan i wouldn't get rid of the first line attach a diagram drawing or plot plan sufficient scale to detail and portray the proposed activity in relation to wetlands and water courses. i would keep that um and i i think you might want to say a scaled diagram um rather than just a diagram because people will give you garbage. Very important. With not, with, Absolutely. With, no with the North yeah. Arrow. Yeah. And with the and North legend. Arrow. Definitely. So now I knock out the, the, sec, the second asterisk and, and supplement the stuff for the, what needs to be in the diagram. A scale drawing with directional reference and legend. Yeah. Yeah. With North Arrow. Okay. North Arrow. 
Yeah, legend. My suggestion would be that you make those adjustments to that form and then just ship it to us independently via email and let us provide you comment back. Sounds good. For the next meeting. Yep, I'll that be able way, to put that together pretty quick. I'm getting tired. I'm getting exhausted. <laughs> yep. We've had uh, a couple others on the line, I think, uh, for citizen comment. Yep. All right, let's move to it then. Uh, we'll get this back up uh, in next month, month's agenda. So. Okay. Let's, uh, let me find it. Where did I put it? Uh, <laughs> the only thing that's next is citizens comments and then adjournment Citiz citizens comments okay let's do that huh where did, I, where did it go where did it go no not that one um, Dang, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm running blind here. I lost my agenda. So I'll just say, okay, well, let's go to citizens comments. <laughs> Anybody online that wants to jump in? <laughs> You're muted. There you go. Hello. Hi, William. Yes. Uh... I just uh, wanted to make, well, here's what's happening. I was uh, had a landscaper come to my house. I live on 29 Loyola Road on uh, Quasset Lake, and I built a new house. So I had a landscaper come over, and he was starting to work. And uh, our association person, I guess, Phil, I guess it was Mahoney, came over and told him, told him that I needed a permit to do the landscaping and and I was unsure what I had to do so I went and uh, stopped in and talked to Dan in the office and uh, he said uh, he didn't think there was going to be a problem but that I should maybe run it by you guys so that's the reason why I'm on the call uh, so what is it anybody has what is it that you want to do on your property? Uh, we're just landscaping. So we're, you know, putting a couple of shrubs in, a couple of flowers, moving some grass around a little bit. I, we have, a, I have an area down towards the water that uh, we're going to level out. So I installed uh, uh, the waddle. I put waddle there and then the, uh, the uh, landscaper also put silt fence down. So, and we're probably eight, 10 feet away from the retaining wall. It's at the end of the, you know, the property. There's, we're not next to the water at all. We're not dealing with any beach or anything like that. <clears throat> so there Marla, you what do you think? Um, I'm thinking, you know, that this just might be a, you know, a, a use permitted as a right for improvement and enjoyment of, uh, of the, the person's property. What do you think? So it, question is what we have on the screen that it, Dan is screen sharing. Is that the property we're talking about? Uh, Dan? Twenty nine Loyola Road. 29, which one is 29? There it is. So that's it. That's your Correct. house? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. 
it's brand new. So and so just, you're, you know. You have Go a retaining ahead, wall down in a beach area? Uh, Is yes, there's a retaining wall down there, yeah. Okay. How close to that, reta uh, to that retaining wall are you? About five, six feet. And then, I, like I said, I put the waddle down across the top of the retaining wall, and then we put some silt fence down also. <clears throat> How much fill have you had brought in? No fill. We're just moving a little bit from the front, and I'm using it up in the uh, from the beach side, to the lake side, and I'm just using it up in the front of the house to level out the driveway and fill in a few potholes. Or potholes or you know low spots on the lawn because everything's brand new you know? okay so um qu your question mark is would this classify as maintenance and enjoyment of residential home yes it could but he hasn't supplied a diagram showing you know typically when you have something like this you give us a diagram say this is what i gotta do i'm earth moving see any work within 125 feet that involves moving of earth or clear cutting of trees or new construction, that has to come before the commission um, or the wetlands agent as a, either wetlands agent approval or as a use a declaratory ruling for a use permit as of right. Right. You've already gotten started, right? Yes. Mr. Hodes? So yes. you're already halfway through? Yes. Okay. So Dan, um, my recommendation, Mark, would be if Dan hasn't seen it, Dan should probably go out to make sure there's no problems with erosion or siltation to the lake and that the commission um, should look at it as maintenance and enjoyment of residential home, even though he hasn't supplied the application form to do that. I think it would classify as maintenance and enjoyment of a residential home. Um, as long as Dan is satisfied that it, there's no problem to the lake. I agree with uh, Mars, uh, Marla's take, and I'll, I'll be happy to go out there on my next shift and uh, and have a look. That sounds good to me. Is that what you want, Mark? Yes. Yep. So we'll do it. We'll do it that way. Okay, thank you. So, so however that goes, Dan, you can report it um, uh, under your report next month. Okay. Okay. Do we have someone else on the line? Let's see. Uh... Bob Dion. Okay, Bob. Bob Dion. Yeah. Good evening. Um, so my address is 135 Laurel Hill Drive, uh, Woodstock Valley. I'm right on Lake Bungie. Um, I sent an email to Dan Mallow uh, the other day. Um, it's an attachment on your agenda. If you could bring that up, that would be a lot easier to explain. But what I'm trying to do is um, there are existing steps going down to the water from when we built in 2010. Um, they are shifting and I would like to replace them with 12 four foot wide granite stones. Right, so I took this picture the other day and you can see where the steps go down to the dock. It's on a little bit of a curve. Um, the dock is four feet wide, which is what the stones are going to be that I wish to replace the granite slabs. And they're gonna run just straight up. And what I'd like to do is take out some of these stones uh, just to clear it for a garden and have the new granite stones run parallel with the dock, just going straight up to my lawn. Uh, the reason I really want to do this <clears throat> is, again, the stones are shifting, and um, it's just a safety issue for me to get down there. It can be a little tricky sometimes, especially if they're wet. So I didn't know how to proceed with this. Um, I spoke to uh, 
Ross Ellison um, the other day about it. And I've already spoken with Mike Allen, who is the beach chair on Lake Bungie. And he's gonna come over and take a look at it. We had planned something for Friday, but I thought I should probably at least talk to you first and uh, see what your thoughts are on this. So to the left of the picture, you can see the riprap that was put in by um, Ross Ellison, the Rhodes chair, um, because there's a, uh, there's a culvert there and an easement to going up to the street. So again, if you look at the dock and you just try to run a straight line, that's all I really wanna do is just add 12 slabs of salt and pepper granite. I think it'll look a lot nicer and it'll be easier for me to get down there. Um, the dock you see right now, uh, the first section of the dock is just a ramp and it lies on two very large existing stones. Um, I am not taking those out. I have no plans on touching the water whatsoever. Pretty much at the end of that ramp is where my first stone will be and it will just proceed up the hill. What were the size of those slabs? Four, four by what? <laughs> They're uh, four foot wide. I think they're 16 inches. Uh, yeah, I think they're six, I'm sorry, four feet by two feet and there'll be a 16 inch step and a seven inch riser. That's big, big stones. <laughs> yeah. How are you gonna get them in? I have, uh, I'm gonna get a small uh, mini excavator to come down, pull out some of those stones. And then just, uh, I hired a contractor to do it and um, Hayden Masonry, he's gonna come down and do that for me. How long does he figure it's gonna take him to do? Um, he's right now in, in the month of May, he teaches at uh, Ellis Tech, he teaches masonry there. And uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's going to do it on his weekend. I, he told me he could, he's going to be working on it part time, but it's probably like a five day effort. Are you planning to do any more excavation to put any uh, type of base in there? Um, I would imagine we would be putting in probably three quarter stone at the, at the underside of each step and just slowly build that up. I'm not sure. And you said you're going to make a, you said you're going to make a garden. So I assume the stones that are on each side of that little walkway. Yeah. That'll you, you're going to bring in topsoil for the garden. Um, no, not really. Cause there's already an existing garden there from when we built the oh. house in 2010, that whole waterfront is a big garden that my wife okay. handles. Okay. So the only concern that would be is during during the excavation work if there could be any siltation getting into the lake. That's well, usually the biggest concern. Put up, we could certainly put up a, a silt fence. And right now the water be, is high because of all the rain we've had. So it'll mm -hmm. be, we probably wouldn't be starting until maybe the third week of May. So for this kind of situation, I wouldn't recommend a silt fence because you don't have the ability to tow it in. You've got stone along the road, you know, and you've got riprap on the side. You would do much better with a waddle and a waddle that's not necessarily staked in the ground because you can move the waddle. Um, okay. I'm not sure what can, a waddle you know, is, so, but I'll find out. Oh, <laughs> um, there's a place up in Dudley that sells them. They, you can also find them sometimes, I think, at Home Depot, but um, they're these um, tubes. It's kind of like a lady's stocking only that it's a big mesh and okay. uh, it, they fill it with hay and it's like a sausage. Okay. And um, it's made up with a plastic netting so it in, can get larger like a lady's nylons can. And, uh, but it's not, it's, it's fairly open. The openings are, are oh, maybe an inch, inch or so square. Um, okay. It's a netting and uh, they fill it with hay usually or straw. It's usually straw actually. And sometimes they're filled with compost and they're rolled up and you unroll them, you carry them, you drop them down. And usually with, with the first rain that hits them, they conform to the ground surface okay. and they make a good 
type contact. So if you have any soil washing off, it catches in it. To get rid of it, when you're done with it, you just take a knife and you slice it to cut the, the netting. Okay. And then you can use the hay elsewhere. It's easy to get up. And it's good in places where you have a lot of stone or tree roots and you can't tow in a silt fence or a hay bale. Uh, in those kinds of cases, you'd have to cove the silt fence in, which means you'd have to bring fill in or stone in to cover over the flap that would hold the silt fence in place. So the wattles make a lot more sense in a situation like this. Okay, and plus okay. you can move them and you can okay. step over them easy. You can't step over a silt fence and you can't okay. step easily over a hay bale. And if you want to get to your dock and it's going to take a couple of weekends for him to do this, you might want to just use a wattle instead. I will yeah. uh, make sure he does that. And Marla, you were saying they come in various thicknesses, they, anywhere from like 10 inches to 14 inches or something like that thick? Yeah, it depends yeah. Depends on the, the landscaping company yeah. or the firm. Uh, there's a place up in Dudley uh, that actually I saw them. They had it on their website advertising it. Um, I don't know of any uh, too many places real close by. I think... Um, Home Depot, not Home Depot, Lowe's, I think, had them at one point. Um, but they do come in various uh, diameters. Diameters, right. Um, and, and they're very easy, to, much easier to install and use. They're a little more expensive than silt fence or hay bale, but they're so much easier to install, it saves you time. Right, and okay. the fact that you've got a guy who's going to be coming in on the weekends and not always be there, which means you might want to be able to move it out of the way when you want to get to your boat or be able to step over it when you want to get to your boat if he's going to take him a couple of weeks to get it all stabilized. Yeah. It's just to protect like, the lake. Normally I would do this kind of work when the lake was drawn down. That would be the best time to do it. Yeah. Because then you have a, a, a you have an area that the sediment can be captured in it in the lake bottom before it actually gets into the standing water. But it looks like you're moving ahead earlier. And this could right. be something that could be since you're not touching the water. This could be maintenance and enjoyment of residential home also. Okay. All right. Um, well, I will make sure we get our waddle. <laughs> and and uh, I guess, I, are you saying I can move forward? Depends on what the rest of the commission decides they want to do. Okay. Uh, I will say that, like say the water is high right now and normally we have, you know, three feet of beach sand beach there um but again it's been raining so much that the water is just high and i'm thinking in three mm -hmm. weeks the water will be down mm -hmm. yep just for reference how wide is that whitest stone on the top um probably probably f four feet It looks like it's the same width as the dock. The dock mm -hmm. is four feet. I don't have any pro problem as long as uh, you notify Dan when you're getting ready to start the work. So if he if he gets any calls or or if the Lake Association has mm -hmm. any concerns, he can go out there and take a look at it. Okay. See if you well, need to adjust your erosion and sediment controls. Okay. In the email, I did invite him out. And I, again, I was just trying to uh, feel this out to see how, what's the best way to approach this. Okay. So um, when we get ready, I will call him and he'll welcome to come out anytime he wants. Yep. Do, um, do any other commission members have a problem working it this way for this particular site? Or did you want to see the paperwork come through? I don't. We'll have to wait till next meeting. I can I can go along with it. Yep, Stuart, you good with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with it, definitely. Okay, yep, I'm okay with it too. Let's let's move it through. Dan, you just be in touch with them. Okay, and I'll uh, let you guys know uh, at the next meeting how it's progressing. Great, thank you. Yep, great, thank you all. Good luck with it. Sounds like it's going to be great fun. Yeah. I'd love, love to see a photograph of there after it's done. <laughs> yeah. right. I will send right. one. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. I have one comment. Um, under citizens' comments. Yep. 
Um, Dan, if you uh, I don't know if you got the bylaws, the the revised bylaws from March sixth to the town clerk, but they need to be changed on the website. We should have the the March sixth, twenty third, two thousand. Excuse me, March sixth, two thousand twenty three version on the website. The older ones are on there right now. So if you just replace it, that would be fine. Okay. All right, Stuart, did and you have something under? Um, I did, I did, yeah. yeah. And it, it's just, I'm gonna leave it as a hypothetical question, but it, it sort of um, dovetails in with the earlier discussion. Um, if, if there is some, uh, in a commercial setting, there's some activity that would possibly have an impact on the underground water system, uh, the water table, a uh, negative impact. What What is the recommended procedure to follow? What would a, a neighbor do in that case? Because we're dealing with, we're basically surface water and water courses, but what, what if something is being done improperly um, without permit, without permitting? And it's affecting uh, the water table. Like what? Are they withdrawing water? I think they're using. Uh, uh, yeah, I think they're they're withdrawing more water than they said they were going to, and that they're using mm -hmm. a a processing liquid that that probably is uh, not good. Um, I I don't know. I can't Are they go into any more details than that. So I've got to keep it. Are they re-injecting it back into the ground or are they discharging it surface wise? I think they're just discharging it surface wise. I'm not sure. Okay. But from what I've so heard, that's what if, it. Yeah. So if it's a surface discharge um, and that reaches wetland or water course, then that could come under the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Commission, potentially. Okay. Um, it also could come under the jurisdiction of DEP if there's chemicals in it. Okay. Um, that would be the first place that I would go is if there was some kind of processing system, because if it's an industrial, they probably have to have licenses through DEP for those discharges. Okay. Um, DEP licenses all kinds of discharges, stormwater discharges, um, industrial discharges. Um, so for example, if you had a concentrated flow coming off of a public works garage, that's considered an industrial discharge because of the potential pollutants that can come from it or from a transfer station. That's not, uh, and it's licensed, that's regulated by DEP. So if it's a, a business, a commercial business that has a processing system that, that discharges water to the surface, even to the ground, they also regulate discharges to the ground that, yeah. if there are chemicals in it. So okay. yeah, I would go to DEP to find out what, or to their web website to find out what kinds of things might be licensed through them. Well, and if if they already have a license, what they're exceeding it, then it's, it's a question of monitoring or enforcement. I don't know what. Yeah. What... You'd have to know if they're covered under a general permit for DEEP, and what that general permit says, what their reporting requirements are. Those usually usually you can find them online. All the general. Okay permits um and if you want to know if somebody's got coverage under a general permit you'd have to contact deep to find out if they registered for a general permit okay um, they do a lot of general permits because that way they get whole classes of people whole classes of industry licensed quickly so for example say you were a you were a uh, car wash yeah. And you're you and you you got a discharge to a waste treatment plant. Now the waste treatment plant has a discharge permit, but the car wash has to get a discharge permit to go to the waste treatment plant. And there I think there are general permits for that for car washes. And I they see. have the certain chemicals that can go into the to the wastewater stream. They regulate uh, that. So there's a lot of things that can affect that can be licensed by DEEP. Okay, that helps. I can convey that and see where it goes. But we may, 
be talking about it again. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I just didn't want to get too many details out there yet. Well, these, uh, Bill Rowinski, the thing you've probably got to be careful of is where you're getting your information and what you're going to be saying about it. Mm -hmm. Because there are liability issues and you don't want to be caught trespassing to get your data. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Good point. Technically, if you're going to, at least for us, as far as I know, if you're going to make a complaint, you want to make it in writing. Okay. Um, I've been told by one attorney that even even an email would not suffice. I mean, that's probably changing now, but you you run the risk of trying to get somebody to work on hearsay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's got to be a substantial uh, process. Well, at least uh, verifiable in, in a legal met legally verifiable. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That's all I had, Bill, uh, Mark. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, next month, January, January, June 5th to the 7th, I am going to be away on a fishing trip to New Hampshire, and I don't think there's going to be a Wi-Fi access for me to log in from New Hampshire. So um, I'm going to ask if we could have the meeting on a different Monday night, because I'm not going to, if I'm not going to be there, I don't think you guys are going to be able to conduct business without me being there. So unless Jay sets in, unless Jay steps in. So um, and then Bill would run the meeting. Right. Dan, you want to ask Jay if he could uh, fill in? Yeah, I, I could. Okay, so see if he will. And if he will, then then yeah, Bill, if it's all right with you, you can run the meeting and I just won't be there. I don't have any choice, so. <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 that, is that for two months? J July 5th and uh, no, July June. 3rd? June. June. June 5th and July 3rd. Uh, no, I'll be here July 3rd. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I just. Are won't we going to have a meeting July 3rd? I think our, we can. No. our meeting was bumped to the next the week. The 10th. Okay. 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 Right. Right. Okay. And I'll, I'll be out of town that day. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, so you, can, that... you can submit a written report, Dan. Yep. <laughs> um. um Okay, so so Dan, if, if Jay says yes, then go ahead and and schedule the meeting and and set up the agenda for for next month. Uh, but if he can't, then you know, um, well, shoot me an email. Okay. And, you know, we can all decide if we want to bump it to another night. My only conflict is the third Monday, um, so I could uh, do the following Monday. But I'll uh, send you an email based on Jay's decision. Great, thank you. Yep. My my only conflict is. Our second Mondays, I have the EDC meeting at six. I I, I might be a few minutes late, but but uh, you should have a quorum anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> Most has been made by Stuart Peasley, seconded by Bill Rowinski to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. At 927, Dottie. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, good Dan. Fun. Thank, Thank you, Dan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.